So another way to use that planar tracker is with the perspective grid. And for shots that move that you might think would require a camera track, you can actually grab a section of ground plane or wall or any planar surface to do an analysis that would allow you to place objects in the scene realistically. So if I just uh, pick points down here in the scene and then uh, do an analysis, what you're going to see is that it will track that ground. And if I look from the, the actual uh, side view in my scene, you're going to understand that this really built a surface that sits in about the right place and moves relative to my camera. So with that in mind, I'll put in my media. I've got a matchbox hex generator here from the user community. And uh, this will just attach to here. And we'll just size it in, shape, and situation here, to suit ourselves. So if I just uh, blend it in there, you'll be able to see how it could then appear to lock down again, like I, as if I'd camera tracked, but I haven't. I've just done a planar track on the ground. I could uh, then integrate this further by bringing in some masks, some G masks right here in the action scene, connected below that perspective grid. And this would allow me to then draw in the plane of the perspective grid so that when I isolate that, it will indeed hold in place. So it might need a little refinement, but the basic idea should hold up. And I could keep doing this for the different chunks of my scene to be able to refine the different areas of the scene as I needed. So taking this on a little further, um, what I might do is show you how you could use those perspective grids for all kinds of things. This might just give you an idea of where you could go with this concept using the pers perspective grids to uh, create these lasers. This really cool piece uh, from PSYOP for Samsung Galaxy.